Entity Relationship Diagram, School Database Class Generation. Now, what we're going to look at here is an actual schema for the way classes might be generated on a school database using a variety of entities. So what we're going to use to outline class generation is a variety of entities in this database, which are going to be student, teacher, subject, classroom, and class. So let's get these entities up here. Okay, so we can see my five different entities there. Firstly, we've got the class, which is what we're trying to generate. We're trying to get a class that is for a specific subject, has about 20 students in it, okay? But we're gonna pull all that data from these other entities. So the first thing that needs to go into this class is students, okay? So we're gonna have student ID, first name, last name, what year group they're in, date of birth, an image of the student, which is probably on the school database, and if the school's in a house colored team. The other important part to a class is the teacher. So we need a teacher ID, first name, last name, their title, what subjects they speak, and if they're at a certain level within the school, are they a coordinator or middle management, anything like that. Okay, now that we've got the teachers and students associated with the class, we then obviously need to assign a room for the class. Okay, so the classroom would have an ID. It might have a certain capacity of the amount of students the classroom can take. It might be a certain type of room, such as a tech lab or a science lab. Okay, and obviously that relates to facilities as well that are available through that room. Does it have a projector or certain types of smart boards or anything like that to be used with that class? And obviously every class has a, is for a specific subject. So what is the specific subject it's for? Being that specific subject, does it have particular requirements? Like tech has WHS requirements, it can't have more than 24 students per class. And thus, what is the max capacity of students that can be in that class? So that is all our main entities that are gonna go into our class. And if we have a look at our class entity, we can see all the IDs there, okay? And there's one more ID, which I'm gonna explain in a second, but I can see there's a classroom ID, a subject ID, a teacher ID, and then a class list ID instead of student ID, okay? The periods get associated for that class and the time of day when that occurs also needs to be laid out. So let's start doing the relationships for this entity relationship diagram. So firstly, okay, let's associate our primary keys. Okay, class ID is our main primary key for each class. So every class gets given a code. Okay, a tech class might be T-E-C-H-A, so it might be Tech A, and it might also have a year group associated with it, so it might be 7 Tech A or 9 Tech A. We're then going to add in our subject. Okay, so if it is tech, it's going to be a technology class. Okay, obviously each class has one subject. Okay, so one subject, okay, is it being applied to every class? Okay, but the classes are going to have a variety of different subjects associated with them. So it is a one-to-many relationship. So one class is going to be a technology class, okay, but obviously the kids that are going into these classes are going to have more than that one technology class, they're going to have an English class, a math class and all that. So that's a one to many relationship. Next is the room, okay, so one room is assigned to every class, okay, but then obviously each class has many rooms. Okay, so once again, it's a one-to-many relationship. Okay, so every specific class is given one room. Okay, but that room is obviously used multiple times by the school. It's the same once again with the teacher. Okay, as we can see, the primary key connecting with the teacher foreign key. Okay, one teacher is assigned to every class, but that one teacher will teach many classes. So another one-to-many relationship. Okay, it's students where it gets a bit more complicated because students and classes is a many to many relationship because every class is going to be taken by many students. As we said, there's going to be up to 25 students in these classes and each student has many classes. So this is going to be a many to many relationship. As stated in previous videos, that's not a direct link in an entity relationship diagram. What we've got to do is compile them in a junction. So we're gonna create this class list entity. And what that means is many students are gonna go into this one class list. And um, if you're familiar uh, with how you operate at school, okay, you're put into different learning groups. And then from those learning groups, you go into many classes, okay? So that one class list is used to populate many classes. So you might be with the same students in PE, in RE, okay, in English, okay? So that class list can be used multiple times, okay? but as with all the other ones, that for every single class, we're only using one class list. So from class list to class, it's a one-to-many relationship.
okay but essentially students and the class have a many-to-many -many relationship which is represented through this junction of the class list so I hope this gives you an understanding of how the school database may generate classes using that database okay essentially they are pulling data from the different entities the smaller databases within the school the subject database the classroom database the teacher database the student database compiling class lists and then putting that all together to make classes okay of 25 to 30 students all throughout the school and obviously there are hundreds of classes in operation throughout the day being that there's multiple periods multiple subjects okay so it's quite a big process but this is how it may look in a schema format